Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Button Off Fellowship. Good to see everybody coming out. Thank God for you all. Uh, we're just going to get right into it. Uh, if you have your Bibles, turn with me to Galatians chapter 6 and verse 14. Just mark your Bibles right there. Once again, want to thank everybody coming out. Thank everybody for their support. Those who are online, we thank you for your support and your care for us in the ministry. Pray for us that we continue to preach the gospel without compromise, without wavering, uh, that we study to show ourselves approved to God, rightly dividing the word of truth. Amen. 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 Because when you do that, you stand on a small island by yourself. <laughs> Not too many people uh, support you. And we're going to find out why today. Or well, one of the reasons why. Uh, let's, let us pray. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for your understanding. We thank you for your kindness and your love. We thank you for Jesus Christ dying on the cross for the forgiveness of our sins. We thank you for being saved by grace through faith without the deeds of the law, but is a true gift of God. The Bible says, while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. And Father, we didn't deserve it, but we thank you. Bless this word, bless this ministry. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Uh, the title, uh, the topic is the duty of the church is to preach the gospel. Now, in saying that, every gospel has its good news, but also every gospel has a doctrine behind it, right? Mm -hmm. There's a certain doctrine along with that gospel. And see, that's a big problem today. People are preaching the wrong gospel, and now they got the wrong doctrine, and now they're all confused, right? Uh, the duty of the church is to preach the gospel, and... Uh, it's this ministry's responsibility uh, to preach the rightly divided word of truth. Uh, we are all here Bible believers, right? We are not a, a organizational structure. We're not a, a denomination. We are Bible believers who are rightly dividing the word of truth. And uh, there are a lot of opinions about, uh, about which gospel should be preached today, right? Because people are not studying the Bible dispensationally. They're studying the Bible traditionally. They're studying the Bible organizationally, right? So they're studying the Bible from a black book's perspective instead of from God's perspective, which is the scriptures. Amen? Mm -hmm. Now, everybody started their, their, their gospel after some, somebody's pattern. Like who was first to preach the gospel? That's the question, right? So the gospel. The word gospel simply means good news. But good news about what? Who are you talking to? Who is it for? What are instructions about the good news? How do the good news are going to affect me? You know, how is it going to help me? That's the question you should ask. So first we must define the plain and simple gospel, right? Uh, I told you to go to Galatians, but go to Corinthians. 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. First Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. And you know, we, we could quote it, or we can tell you the scripture, we just want to read it. Alright? It says, Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved. You heard that? Mm -hmm. This gospel which I preached to you, this is how you saved. Amen. Right? Amen. If you keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless you have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. Right? And that he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. Uh, this is the plain and simple gospel for us today by which a man can be saved. All he has to do is believe this. There's no works involved. 
There's no steps to take. You just trust what the scriptures say about Christ dying for your sins, and you are saved eternally. Right? Now, along the way, you're going to learn and you're going to grow in grace as you study to show yourself approved. But this is the plain and simple gospel. You know, you, you want to ask your question. Well, if somebody is dying right now, and you got to give them a plain and simple gospel, what would you tell them? How would you approach them? How would you have them approach God? Don't tell them, okay, you got to do this, then you got to come back tomorrow and do that. Uh, you got to wait for this to happen. Or you got to wait until you join the church and give the right hand of fellowship. You got to go get baptized. None of, that, none of that's going to save you. Right? Mm -hmm. Not today. Mm -hmm. Amen? Mm -hmm. Now, uh, we, I told you to go to Galatians, correct? Mm -hmm. right. So the gospel is Christ and his finished work on our behalf for salvation. That is the plain and simple gospel. Through faith in the cross of Christ, we have God's grace. We have his atonement for sins and eternal life. By the gospel, we glory in the cross of Christ. Go, go to Galatians 16, I mean 6 and 14. So we can read this. Galatians 6 and 14. But God forbid that I should glory save in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom the world is crucified unto me and I unto the world. Listen to this. For in Christ Jesus neither circumcision availeth anything, nor uncircumcision, but a new creature. All right, you see that? Mm -hmm. And we're going to find out down the line that circumcision and all that stuff had its place in some of these gospels, but not this gospel for today. That has nothing to do with anything, right? The plain and simple gospel is what I just read to you in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. If you trust that, you are saved eternally. Amen? Amen. Now, we already know this gospel was clearly preached by Paul in 1 Corinthians. But Paul also said that he was the last to see Christ. Now, how is that possible? So if Paul was the last to see Christ, how is Paul the first one to preach the gospel? That's a question you want to ask yourself, right? Go to 1 Corinthians 15 and 8. 1 Corinthians 15 and 8. We're going to read that. I'm reading everything I tell you. <laughs> Look what he said. And last of all, he was seen of me also as one born out of due time. I'm going to put a little icing on it. For I am the least of the apostles, that I am not meet to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. Mm -hmm. So Paul, the running... Paul running around busting people in the head, you know, in the name of religion, you know, knocking you off, you know, getting you set up, coming in your house, you know, jacking you out your house, taking you to jail, in prison and all that. But yet you say you're the first one to preach the gospel. Mm -hmm. Something don't sound right here. Right? So for this reason, right, we could put Paul at the end of the list. He ain't the first to preach the gospel. Now we got we gotta we gotta search the scriptures to see who could who could really be the one who preached the gospel first before him. Now I know everybody familiar with John the Baptist, right? Go to Mark chapter one. Mark chapter one. Mark chapter one. Look at this, John the Baptist. Now, surely John was the first one, right? Right? If John had to be the first one to preach the gospel, right? Let's see, let's see. <laughs> you see, see that? It's getting hot. That's right, though. You know, people, I'm telling you, look, look at that. It said, the beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. The beginning. Hold up now. Ah, now, I know. I know a lot of y'all know somebody who went to a Baptist church before, <laughs> right? All right. And uh, this is where their foundation come from. This right here. This is what their whole doctrine is based on. John the Baptist. Think about it. 
the Baptist church. <laughs> you see that? Mm -hmm. It says John did baptize in the wilderness and he preached the baptism of repentance for the remission of sins. Right? Go to Mark, Mark 1 and 4. We're going to keep reading. John did baptize in the wilderness and preached the baptism of repentance for the remission of sins. Right? And there went out unto him all the land of who? Yeah. And all of who? Aha, uh -huh. now, now, where's Asia Minor? Where the Galatians at? Where the Corinthians at? Where all these people at? If, if you know, if it's just one gospel, this is the first dude to preach the gospel. Somebody missing. Judea and Jerusalem, and were all baptized of him in the river of Jordan, confessing their sins. Not our program. We're we going to get to it in, in a minute. Uh, go to Matthew 11. Matthew 11. And hold it there. I tell you, Pastor Hobbs is before his time, man. I always tell him he's a... Uh, in, in the spiritual sense, he got a long gray beard. <laughs> he looked like Samuel. Uh, Matthew 11. Matthew 11. Now, the Gospel of John the Baptist included water baptism and, and all of those things. And unfortunately, John did not know who Jesus was for, for most of his ministry. Now, if I say that in another setting, they'll crucify me. What you mean he didn't know who Jesus was? He said he saw him coming to be baptized. Yeah. Well, let's read this. And, and tell me if Matthew lying or not. It says, And it came to pass, when Jesus had made an end of commanding his twelve disciples, he departed thence to teach and preach in their cities. Now, when John had heard in prison of the works of Christ, he sent uh, two of his disciples. And he said unto him, Art thou he that should come? Or do we look for another? Mm -hmm. <laughs> do that sound like he know who he is? <laughs> <laughs> Hold up, bro. If you the one, well, we should, we should look for another dude. <laughs> and Jesus answered and said unto them, Go and show John again those things which you do hear and see. The blind received their sight, and the lame walk, and the lepers are cleansed, and the deaf hear, and the dead are raised up, and the poor have the gospel preached unto them. Now, this is part of their gospel, this healing. And you know, for Israel, the healing was also synonymous with the forgiveness of sins. It was a precursor of what God had promised them earlier about their kingdom. Right? It say, Isaiah said uh, Isaiah said that, that nobody gonna be sick no more. Ain't nobody gonna be sick. Ain't nobody gonna be hurting or none of that in this kingdom. Everybody gonna be whole and perfect, right? So this would make it obvious that John couldn't be the first one to preach the gospel. I, I got another one. Go to John 1 and 33. Let's go there. 1 and 33. Just to let you know, John didn't know who Jesus was. One, John 1 and 33. He didn't know Jesus was for most of his ministry. Now, God did give him a glimpse of who he was, but I guess that was just, you, you chalk that to the Holy Ghost. Right? And it said John was born with the Holy Ghost. And he still didn't know everything? Hmm. That's something, man. 1 and 33. And I knew him not. You can start right there, semicolon. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> right? But he that sent me to baptize with water, the same said unto me. Now, who is he that sent him to baptize with water? Who gave John his commission? Who gave John his, his ministry? John the Baptist. John the Baptist. God, okay. So God said unto him upon whom thou shalt see the Spirit descending and remaining on him, the same as he which baptizes with the Holy Ghost. Now look, look at the irony in this. First of all, John and Jesus is cousins. They're actually cousins. So how you all know your cousin? 
They say Mary went to see Elizabeth. She was already six months pregnant, and the baby recognized yeah. Jesus in the womb. Mm. Right. But now your ministry has started. You're the forerunner, and you still don't know who Jesus is. Mm. Well, the disciples was with him. They didn't know. They didn't know. <laughs> We're going to get there, too. <laughs> they don't know. So that, that lets you know that, that uh, John Gospel couldn't have been the first gospel either. Because John gospel don't have nothing to do with the death of Christ at all. It don't talk about, it eliminates the death of Christ. He's not talking about that. He's talking about repent, be baptized for the remission of your sins. What John is doing, see, I don't want to give my next message up, but, but what John is doing, he's preparing Israel to go into the kingdom, right? And I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you why they needed to be prepared next, next session. I don't want to give it away. So, so if you ask me a question, I'm going to refer you to the next session. <laughs> All right? Now, let's look at Jesus' ministry to Israel. It says, the Lord himself began his ministry shortly after John. For this reason, now we got another group of people, evangelical churches. They pattern their ministry after this, after the four gospels. Right? They pattern their ministry after Israel. So when we read that Jesus preached when he began his ministry, we find that it was not for the death and burial and resurrection for sins. Right? But it was the kingdom prophesied to Israel. Go to Matthew 15. Matthew 15 and 24 and go to Luke chapter 4 and 17. Get Matthew first and put your finger, well get Luke first, put your finger there and go to Matthew. Matthew 15, 24. Matthew 15, 24. If I'm going too fast, tell me slow down. All right. Luke 4. Matthew 15, 24. We're going to start at 17. So when y'all when y'all got them, let me know. No, we're going to go Matthew first. I tell you, those, those scriptures get you hype, boy. <laughs> <laughs> I know I ain't supposed to say that, but I'd be ready to go to walk. <laughs> <laughs> all right, everybody all right? Okay, Matthew 15 and 24. Everybody know this scripture, but we're going to read it. But he answered and said, I am not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. So let's stop right there. If Jesus preaching the gospel of the kingdom and he's only sent to the lost sheep of the house of Israel, that gospel has stipulations to it, correct? Uh -huh. And with that stipulation, that gospel has certain instructions to it, right? That's right. And with those certain instructions, they got a certain doctrine attached to it. Yeah. That's a problem today. That is a huge problem. Why you think we got all these churches? We got Baptists. This is the ones I can remember. Baptists. We have Lutheran. We have Episcopal. We have Presbyterian. We have Church of God in Christ. We got Methodist. We got Catholic. We got African uh, Methodist. Uh, we got, uh, that's the AME, right? We have, uh, what you got? Pentecostal. Come on, help me out. Keep going. CME. CME. ABC. ABC. <laughs> Church of God in Christ. Church of God. Church of God. Church, Church of, of Christ. Christ. Yeah. And I, I had a stick with them when I was a little bitty kid because I don't know what they was doing with the Jehovah Witness books in their in they thing. But we would look at those in their little Sunday school class like when I was real little. I don't know what I was doing there, but I remember that. <laughs> and they think they're the only church that's going to heaven. Uh -huh. Oh, my God. The Mormons, Jehovah Witness, it's a problem. It is a problem. Oh. <laughs> those guys, all. every time I come to Martin Luther King in Nebraska, he's trying to give me one of those things. Last call, last call. Yeah, you're right. You, it's your last call. <laughs> you're right. 
I'll tell you, man, this stuff, this stuff is really, really important for the growth of a believer. Because, see, I'm, I'm, I'm going into my next session, huh? Keep going. Let me chill out. <laughs> Luke chapter 4. Luke chapter 4, verse 17. This is letting you know the, the uh, extent of Jesus' ministry here. Because even in the beginning of his ministry, it, it, the pattern was set. Because what I'm about to read is an excerpt from Isaiah. But Isaiah says a little bit more than what this one says. Right? Look what it says. And there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written. The spirit of the Lord is upon me because he had anointed me to preach the what? Yes. To the poor. He had sent me to what? Heal yes. the brokenhearted. To preach what? Yes. To the captives. Uh -huh. He's describing to you what this gospel is. Right? And recovering sight to the blind. Mm -hmm. And to set at liberty them that are what? Bruce. To preach the what? Acceptable year of the Lord. <laughs> Look what 20 said. And he closed the book. Mm -hmm. Do that say anything about him dying? Do that say anything about wrath, no. punishment? None of that, right? This is good news right here. And then he gave it back to the minister and sat down, and the eyes of all of them in the synagogue were fasted on him. And, and he began to say unto them, This day, this day and this scripture fulfilled in your ears. You know they almost lost their minds. <laughs> It's now here. Everything that you've been taught, everything that you've been learning, everything that you've been hoping for is now here. The gospel. Right? Mm -hmm. So now after John was put into prison, Jesus came to Galilee preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God, saying the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent, believe the gospel. John, I mean Mark 1 and 14. Clearly, Jesus ministered to the circumcision about the promises made to the fathers. And that's in Romans 15 and 8. Jesus showed himself to be king and the son of God, but was silent about his future death until the later in his ministry. They didn't know he was going to die. So let's switch gears here. Let's go to Peter and the 12. Now, you know the Roman Catholic, they think Peter was the first bishop. But let's back up. <laughs> let's back up a little bit because the only time the term bishop is used in the scriptures is according to Paul's doctrine. Peter was not associated with Paul's doctrine. Okay. So Peter could not be a bishop. I don't even think any of those guys were, were really pastors. If you think about it, the scriptures does not allude to that. They were just leaders of the church. You ever notice that? You ever notice any gospel of the kingdom preachers that were actual pastors? You ever thought about that? You ever thought that that's something to think about? Like seriously, like it wasn't like that because remember their program, they had people that were specified as priests. You see that? We're going to talk about that. Yes, sir. Then what were their jobs as far as teaching? Oh, they, they, they were they supposed to go preach what? the gospel, yeah. <laughs> what were they teaching? The, the gospel world. of the kingdom. Yeah, they were preaching the gospel of the kingdom. Remember now, they all fellowship in the temple. Yes, okay. You see that? And you, and you, you have to think when you said that they weren't pastors, they were leaders of the church. You, like you pointed out before, you have to understand that their who who was their audience? Their audience was only Israel. Right. Yeah. When Paul's gospel went out, he needed pat God had that needed pastors, elders, bishops, because you had different groups of people yeah, right. who needed yeah. actual physical leaders in the congregations. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So therefore, you needed pastors, bishops at, at different places. <laughs> In different parts of the country mm -hmm. with Israel they would all be in Jerusalem right but then Christ would go after the lost sheep 
which was the Israel that was spread abroad. Right. That's what he was talking about in Luke. Right. So understand that that's, that was the purpose that they were. They didn't need pastors and bishops then because they all met in the temple and the synagogues in one place that's in Jerusalem. Right. That's right. So you didn't need nobody other than the, the 12 apostles. Paul did, but Paul was only one apostle. He couldn't be every place at once. Yeah. So God had him to set up uh, uh, elders and pastors and bishops to oversee those particular uh, churches where he couldn't be all at once. And yeah. he's still the overseer because he still wrote them letters. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Paul, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was. He was, he was definitely the first fruit. Yeah. You know, <laughs> we know that. And, and, and see, I'm trying not to give away what I'm going to say next time because you're asking the questions, man. But remember, you remember that when after Pentecost, right, Peter preached that message. Indicted Israel. Them boys said, what we got to do to be saved? Mm -hmm. They was repenting and baptized. Uh -huh. 3,000 was added to the church. Right? And at the end of all of that stuff, they said everybody was on one accord and they continued in the apostles' doctrine. You see that? Well, see, you have sent me back to somewhere and I asked <laughs> another question. So. Go ahead. Go ahead. So, could you read Matthew uh, 15 and... From 22 to where you just finished out of Matthew at? All right, let's start at 21. Okay. Then Jesus went thence. Matthew 15. Yeah, 15 and 21. All right. Then Jesus went thence and departed into the coast of Tyre and Sidon. And behold, a woman of Canaan came out of the same coast and cried unto him, saying, Have mercy on me, Lord, thou son of David. My daughter is grievously vexed with the devil. But he answered her not a word. That's kind of rude, huh? Okay. Well, you make sure you know what's happening. That's why. Yeah, I know exactly what's happening. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I know exactly what's happening. But if you go on, keep reading it, because we're crumbs eaters. Well, at that time we was. We're not crumb eaters no more. Ministry. Yeah, at that time we were. If we if we were there at that time, we would have been in the same position as this Canaanite woman. Exactly. But now there's no difference between that. Jew and Greek. But that's what I'm saying. But now. But oh, but, oh, yeah, see. <laughs> but now. <laughs> but now. Yeah. But so I want people to see that his ministry yeah. wasn't for us in the beginning. Oh, yeah. yeah. It never was. If people didn't notice that. You, you're a Gentile. You're not seeing that until he won't say certain things. But that's because he came to fulfill a promise. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you a snippet here. I'm going to talk about next time, what church do you attend? All right? Okay. Every church has its qualifications. You got to ask yourself three questions, right? Who does it consist of? What were his instructions? And what was his function? I'm going to tell you that next time. Okay. All right? Don't get me all worked up. <laughs> 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 Curious. Yeah, man. Uh, I, I just you want, you want me to finish reading? Yeah, go ahead and finish reading so that people get a, a, a gesture of what's going on as far as when we were talking about John the Baptist didn't know. And he was explaining to other people what's going on. But people like us weren't allowed to be at the table to eat the meat. Well, so, with, with, the thing, with the thing with this, John the Baptist uh, had a particular ministry to be the forerunner of Christ. He came to prepare the way for the Lord, mm -hmm. right? So, uh, and it goes all the way back to, to Exodus, right? Mm -hmm. Where uh, God told Israel that they were going to be a kingdom of priests, mm -hmm. right? right. He gonna be, they're going to be a holy nation. They se God separated them from all other people to be his reason in the earth, right? So they, there were qualifications that they had to meet uh, in order to meet this covenant, right? They, they didn't keep it, but in the beginning it was fresh, right? So what John is doing, it was just a, a foreshadow of what the real thing was going to be. Right. So what John did, he came and he, he was preparing the people to be able to be administered into the kingdom. Mm -hmm. he, had to, he had to consecrate them. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? That's where these other denominations get consecration from. Mm -hmm. That ain't your program. Mm -hmm. you, you know, just, just take a bath. That's it. <laughs> You ain't got to do all that other stuff, right? But that, but that was the particular ministry for John to prepare the way for the king. Mm -hmm. and, and John was just a forerunner. So John didn't know everything. He only knew what God allowed him to know, right? And it was, it was for, the, it was for the, the best cause because it, it could have turned out 
bad if he knew more than what he needed to know. You see what I'm saying? So God had his plan in order from the, from all the way from the beginning. So uh, you want me to finish reading? What else you want me to point out here? The difference between crumbs and meat. <laughs> well, well, like I said, even back with, in Abraham days, okay, God told Abraham that he was going to bless them that blessed him and curse them that curse him, right? So we fast forward a little bit. When Abraham, uh, Isaac, you know, Abraham and Isaac, Jacob, and Jacob had his 12 sons. And, and when people that were Gentiles would do right by Israel, God would bless them. So she had to, she had to come in Christ in her rightful place in order to be blessed. You understand what I'm saying? Because he said, look what he said. Now, it's not meat for me to take the children's bread and cast it to the dogs. At this time, Gentiles were considered dogs. They were, they were not a people. In God's eyes. But yet God still had mercy on them where they could still be saved, but they had to go through Israel. You see that? So when she took her rightful place and went through Israel, she was able to be blessed. You see that? But now there's no going through Israel. Because of Israel's fall, now we have access to God individually. You see that? Amen. Yes, sir. And also understand that she was not saved here. No, Her no. daughter was just healed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. See that, uh, like he pointed out, they, God showed mercy on the Gentiles back then if they bless Israel. Yeah. The mercy was not salvation. Mm -hmm. You see, that's that's the that's the key. People following this program, if you you can follow it, but you you're not, they're not saved. They're just blessed mm -hmm. in a sense of healing and those types of things, but they're not saved. We today, uh, as Pastor Elba just pointed out, we don't have to go through Israel. There's only one mediator today between God and man. That's Christ Jesus. Amen. And he provides us salvation, not just blessings and healings. He provides salvation, something that's eternal, an eternal weight of glory. They, they didn't get an eternal weight of glory as far as their soul salvation is concerned. And also, with, with our salvation does not necessarily equate healing. No. Not today. You can be saved and still be sick. Mm -hmm. Your leg will be hurting and you get saved, your leg will still hurt yeah. for, mm -hmm. for the next five years. Yeah. Yeah. You better go to the doctor. Yeah. Yeah. Now, I'm not saying God couldn't heal you, but it's not synonymous like Israel's program. Right. You see what I'm saying? So there's a, there's a gospel, right, for a particular people with particular instructions, and it has a particular function, mm -hmm. right? That's what I'm trying to say with today's religions, what you finally get is you get religions telling you that, that is your program, mm -hmm. that Christ came to save the world, but that's technically <laughs> not true right away. Biblical. Yeah. 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 Biblical. No, no, he it, already it, knew what he was going to do. He came. Right, world, right. But he came to fulfill the promises to Israel. Amen. And yeah. that was the whole thing. Yeah. And then Israel didn't accept it, then there had to be another way through. I'm right. They did. I ain't going to say, Amen. if they did, what would that left is? Okay, this, 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 would happen. this would happen if Israel would accept it. That's what That's I'm right. saying. I still had to wait 100 for 144,000, I believe. <laughs> yeah, we, we, you, who who we knows? Who knows? Class citizens in that kingdom. Yeah, who yeah. knows? That's what I'm if you would have made it in. That's what I'm saying. We'd have to wait for them to preach to us, to Israel itself. Yeah, but brother, it's going to be hard. I ain't want to go out there. Like, yeah. So put that <laughs> I need all that. Thank God for the I'm just saying, that's where religion tries to put us, though. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, uh, most definitely, man. And, and I'm telling you, most of, these, most of these subjects that we come up with is because of those things that are happening around us today. It's never going to be a lack of material. Because we, I'm telling you, we're a minority when it comes to this message of right division. Amen. Right division brings freedom. It brings liberty. Amen. Amen. It brings understanding. Yes. It releases you from bondage. Amen. And, 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 and go, go to Mark. Go to Mark chapter 7. Let me show, let me show you what, what's happening to folk these days. Mark chapter 7. And, and, and they might start out with the right intention. They might start out with the right intention, but this is what they wind up doing, and it comes down the line, and, and it gets so bad that you don't even remember what the truth really was. Mm. 
So now you're preaching fables and, and wise tales and black book doctrine. Right? Mm -hmm. Look what it says. Mark chapter 7. Uh, then came together unto him the Pharisees and certain of the scribes which came from Jerusalem. And when they saw some of his disciples eat bread with defile, that is to say with unwashing hands, they found fault. Look at, look at, look at the hypocrites here. For the Pharisees and all the Jews, except they wash their hands off, they don't eat, eat not. Holding the tradition of the elders. Look at that word now. Tradition. The tradition of the elders. Mm -hmm. This is not scripture. Tradition. Tradition. Now don't get me wrong. They, they had commandments to wash their hands and different things like that. But they didn't make their own stuff up here. Right? And when they come from the market, except they wash, they eat not. And many other things there be, which they have received to hold as washing of cups, pots, brazen vessels, and of tables. We're going to get here. And then the Pharisees and the scribes asked them, Why walk not thy disciples according to the tradition of the elders, but eat with bread with unwashing hands? Mm -hmm. Now you think Jesus is going to allow his disciples to do something that's against the law? Mm -hmm. He would be responsible for that, right? right? So in his heart he would sin, correct? Mm -hmm. So he wouldn't, he wouldn't allow them to do something against the law. So they're not the law that they're breaking here. Is the elder's tradition. Right. Let's keep going here. And when he answered unto them, Well, had Isaiah prophesied to you hypocrites? As it is written, This people honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. Okay. We're going to get to the main clincher here. How, how be it in vain do they worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men? The doctrines of the commandments of men, right? For laying aside the commandment of God. So what you do, you take your own doctrine and your own tradition, and you put it in the forefront, and you take God's word and put it in the back seat. And this is what they're doing today. So now the gospel is watered down. It's all jumbled up. It's a gumbo gospel. You understand what I'm saying? Y'all know what gumbo is, huh? You got all kind of stuff in there. It's good, but it, it, you eat too much, you're in trouble. <laughs> You, you can finish reading this whole chapter, but I just wanted to point that out. That what they're doing, they're taking the, the gospel or the doctrine of God, the real gospel, and they're putting their own gospel in its place. Yes, sir. I want to read these verses in Colossians 2. Yeah, go ahead. Colossians 2, 8 says, Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit, mm -hmm. after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. Look at that. And then verse 20 says, Wherefore, if ye be dead with Christ from the rudiments of the world... Why, as though living in the world, are ye subject to ordinances? Mm -hmm. Touch not, taste not, handle not, all the things that was talked about in Mark. Right. Which are all to perish with the using, after the commandments and doctrines of men, which things have indeed a show of wisdom and will, worship and humility and neglecting of the body, not in any honor to the satisfying of the flesh. It's a waste of time. Yeah. What it's doing is putting you under bondage. Okay. Pastor, can you get the Galatians uh, 6 verse about... They, they're teaching the law, but don't know what they're talking about. Mm. This, uh, that Galatians 6, or around 20-something? Galatians 6, around... Uh, is it 15? Yeah, so, is it 15? No. Uh, no, that's First Timothy. No, no, it's in Galatians. Galatians? Yeah. Let me see. You can do Timothy, too. Let me, let me get Galatians, you get Timothy. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Because you didn't want me to say this one time. I think it's 12. It's That's 12? Book, yeah. yeah, you didn't want me to tell somebody this one day. <laughs> I'm going to read Galatians, you read Timothy. Okay. This is Galatians chapter 6, verse 12. As many as desire to make a fair show in the flesh, they constrain you to be circumcised, only lest they should suffer persecution for the cross of Christ. For neither they themselves who are circumcised keep the law but desire to have you circumcised that they may glory in your flesh. So you will touch not, don't taste this, you don't do that, but they're doing something behind the doors, stealing the people money in the, in the, uh, in the marketplace when they come to sacrifice. Why do you think Christ went and turned over all the money changers? They got a little extra weights under there, taking more gold than they're supposed to take. But they ain't going to tell you that, but you better wash your hands. You see what I'm saying? You got it, Pastor? Uh, uh, 1 Timothy 1 and verse 7. 
uh, desiring to be teachers of the law, understanding neither what they say nor where of their firm. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? You can't get caught up in that. But the only way you won't is to know what gospel Amen. you need to be listening to. Amen. Right? Amen. The gospel of grace. Now, now I got to I gotta really go now. <laughs> I thought I was going to be too fast. Uh, this is Peter at Pentecost. All right? It is at this point we move forward to the time when Pentecostals think the gospel began. Now, this is what we're familiar with. Right? All of us came out of a Pentecostal type setting, charismatic people. People who believe in the spirit moving and speaking in tongues and all of those different things. That was Israel's program. All right? So look, look, this is this is where they think the gospel actually began. So after all, it is after the resurrection of Christ, he gave his disciples a commission to preach the gospel. Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Mark 16 and 15. So which gospel was preached at Pentecost? Was Peter the first to preach the gospel when he was filled with the Holy Ghost? Ah, that's another question. Is it? Anybody? Anybody? Was Peter the first to preach the gospel after he got filled with the Holy Ghost at Pentecost? Was he the first to preach the gospel? This, the, the, no. mo most people no. would say yes, but the, the thing about it, he wasn't the first to preach any gospel. Exactly. No, he wasn't. He was... He was, he was he, he actually had two other gospels that he helped out with. Yeah. You know what's that? Let's see. Let, let's see. Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you. Who that sound like? John the Baptist. When we, when we read in Mark chapter 1. John the Baptist. Same thing he said, right? Let's keep going. In the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. That's the little difference there right there. You see that difference? John didn't say be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. He didn't really know who Christ was for most of his ministry. You see that, you see that subtle difference? It's the details. Peter got a little bit different gospel here. It ain't quite the same as John, but it's a continuation of it. You see that? And Peter, uh, and Peter said unto them, repent, be baptized, every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. John couldn't promise you that. That wasn't John's message. Go to Acts 2 and 38. You know, that's everybody's favorite scripture. They even make jokes about it. So, Pastor, that's because progression, is that what it is? And God has specific instructions for specific people. Yes. He don't give it all to one individual, but... Yes. Okay. Yes. It, it, it's progressive revelation. Mm -hmm. That's right. Yes, ma'am. That is so true, mother. And it's in his time. Mm -hmm. Under his instructions. You can't fast forward, God. You know, all you're going to be doing is hurting yourself. Acts 2 and 38. This is that. <laughs> that's the black book right there, baby. <laughs> it said, then Peter said unto them, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ. For the remission of your sins, and you receive, and you shall receive the gifts of the Holy Ghost. This is what they don't say after that. Look at this now, twenty nine. For the promise is unto you and to your children and to all that are far off, even as many as the Lord shall call. <coughs> Who promised them this? Who had the promise from the beginning? Israel. 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 See, I don't want to spill over to the next one. Israel had the promise. This was promised to Israel, the gift of the Holy Ghost. I, I'm, I'm going to try to spend a little bit of time next session in, in Exodus chapter 29 so we can go over the stuff we talked about on with Billy, about the, the office of the priest and all that. I'm going to read all that stuff because it makes a lot of sense. You know what I mean? To, to what we're saying today because it has a lot to do with the different churches. Right? Uh any, any questions right now? Uh, oh, say so. So, uh, what, clear, what is clear from Peter's message, though, is on the day of Pentecost, Israel was that he repeated John's preaching of baptism and Jesus' gospel of the kingdom. Mm -hmm. But where's the cross? There's some more progression here coming, mother. Peter only had so much. He preached John's baptism, 
and, and Jesus' gospel, but no cross. So his gospel can't be the same gospel as Paul, right? Mm -hmm. Peter's gospel can't be the same gospel as Jesus and, and, and John. Something was a little bit different. Mm -hmm. Jesus didn't say, come get baptized in my name. He didn't say that. You notice that, right? Mm -hmm. He just said, repent and believe the gospel. He didn't say, come get baptized in my name. See, Peter couldn't say that until Christ left out of here. See that? A lot of things couldn't happen until Christ went back to the Father. I was telling a young man yesterday, because he came in, and he was asking about the church and the youth ministry, and we was talking about how uh, uh, Jesus said that he would go and prepare a place. You know the famous scripture that everybody read at funerals. I'm going to go and prepare a place for you <laughs> in my father's house of many mansions, where you go. But he said this, where you go, where I go, you can't follow me there. So how in the world is Israel going to go to heaven? He said, I'm going to go and prepare the place and bring it back to you. So in Revelation, John said, I saw a new heaven and a new earth. But he said he saw the city coming down, not heaven. Uh, details. The city of New Jerusalem was coming down. Not heaven was coming down. A lot of preachers say, oh, I saw heaven and earth coming down. No, you didn't. John didn't say that. <laughs> you see that? It's a killer. It, 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 really, it really stunts your growth, man. I, I'm, I'm telling you, I believe that we got this message at the right time in our lives. I'm not going to deny that. Because if we'd have had it a little earlier, I don't know what we'd be doing, bro. <laughs> <laughs> we probably would have went off, man. Young good days. Yeah, <laughs> man. So we know that Peter wasn't the first one to preach the gospel. So now while he preaches the death of Christ, we know Peter preached Christ dying, right? Peter condemns Israel for killing Christ and does not preach the cross as their glory. Go to Acts 5 and 28. 5 and 28. And then Acts 10 and, 20, and, and 39. Acts 5 and 28 and Acts 10 and 39. You know, man, I've been using my, my physical Bible a lot, man. Mm. You know, I used to use that iPad heavily. <laughs> <laughs> All right? 